tax one, um, tax two was actually a kind of an anagram of X2. So there never was a tax one. And what happened to it? Well, that's a long story. I don't think I have quite time to go into that right now. Uh, if you want to know, you can Google for uh, evil patents. And I believe that I am still number one hit on Google for evil patents quotes. Um, so here we are. Uh, it's nice to be back. I was out of the kernel community for a little while. Uh, came back uh, for the purpose of finishing uh, work on Tux3. So, and as we all know, uh, Linux needs another new file system, right? <laughs> so, uh, I mean, everybody loves a new file system. You look forward to it with a mixture of excitement and dread. <laughs> we get to have a bunch of groovy new features and discover some groovy new bugs and have some, usually some wonderful uh, flame wars on the Linux kernel. And uh, somehow that eventually turns into progress. Um, so uh, what am I doing writing a file system? I guess I just have to say that something about Linux, every Linux developer feels they have a file system in them. <laughs> like, just like a, a novelist uh, has a novel. So um, some of us finish our file systems and they become great, important things deployed to the entire Linux world, which now consists of some uh, 600 million machines out there. So uh, we've got a rather large market, market for everything we do. And that means that we should, when we satisfy that market with new technology, we should be awfully, awfully careful just about just how we go about that. And uh, I think I can reasonably claim to be pretty careful about that uh, because this project is really about 15 years old now, <laughs> if you count from the beginning of Tux 2. Okay, let's jump in. So why Tux 3? Uh, why even uh, write a new file system? Why am I not like implementing the le uh, latest Web 2 thing or some you know cloud thing um, where all the action is these days? Well, uh, fact is that uh, local file systems are, are really the be all and end all of how, our, uh, how a computer works, especially how Linux works. It, it runs everything. You, you won't be having these new wonderful cloud platforms without really solid local file systems uh, underneath. And we, we always expect a lot. We expect more and more out of the, the same hardware just because that's the, that's the way uh, Linux is. Um, and it turns out to be one of the most important determinants of performance for just about everything you do. Uh, certainly, uh, it uh, affects the reliability of everything you do. I mean, if your data goes away, or gets corrupted, uh, that's kind of the end of most projects you might get into. Uh, also, flexibility. How, how flexible is, is your file system? Can you move your data around from machine uh, to machine? Um, can you, uh, say, replicate it from Mm, uh, for backup just by raving, uh, waving your hands, and the answer to that is no. So uh, uh, what we want with Tux3 file system is to affect that flexibility in a positive uh, way, and especially by letting you just wave your hands and, and do magical things like, uh, like having your data off safe in the cloud somewhere. It's, it's not something we can do. Uh, today. I mean, we can 
kind of make a duct tape solution with LVM snapshot and uh, other things. Um, but we, we can't do what we really should be doing today, and, and we should. Let's do something about that. Um, but really, did I say why Tux3? I haven't said why Tux3 right now. We've got like, lots of file systems out there. We've, we've got um, uh, X4 is still you know, chugging along. Uh, and part, part of that's my fault. <laughs> sad to say. Uh, no, I'm not sad to say. I'm really actually proud of it. Um, uh, fixing up the directory system to make it outperform a lot of the high-tech file systems from from other companies and platforms uh, was one of the things that allowed it to continue on to its uh, preeminent position today deployed on more than 500 million computers. Um, and then we have uh, we have uh, ButterFS uh, our great hope and answer to Sun's uh, ZFS. It seems to be progressing well in that direction. Um, and uh, we've got enterprise uh, uh, file systems. Uh, XFS uh, came from way back in uh, SGI, knew a thing or two about uh, scalability. Um, but what's Tux3 doing in here? Well. Um, text three is because some of us really believe in, you know, we, we have old school beliefs, uh, old school Unix beliefs of uh, very specific functionality. Each component should should do what it does best. It, uh, we, we, we don't want to be a volume manager. We want to be a file system and we want to be the best file system we possibly can. Uh, we want to uh, we want to raise the bar for uh, for data safety. Uh, how your how we keep your data. You know, uh, um, if you make some changes to a document and save your file and 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 hit the power, uh, your data really should be there. There's, there. there's no excuse for it not being there, and that's, that's not a, uh, a test that's always been met on, on the next. There's, uh, there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to do that, and, and that's one of the things that we're trying to do. Uh, performance. Uh, the last word in performance has not been written in uh, file systems. Um, I know that because we have advanced the performance bar. Um, otherwise, I'd just be guessing. Uh, robustness and simplicity uh, are hand in hand. If you want robustness, you better have the simplicity. Hi, Natalie. <laughs> nice to see you. Um, so, and I think more than anything, uh, we can sum it up. Uh, uh, with uh, we want to advance the state of the art. So let's go and look at how we've done that or, or whether we've done that. Uh, a little bit of history. Um, I'll start basically halfway through Tux3 history. We'll leave off the uh, Tux2 and start with uh, Zoomist door, which Natalie knows something about, a former colleague from Google, where we developed a, an enterprise filer that had a requirement of uh, snapshotting and replication. So uh, um, I uh, developed, the team developed a thing called uh, DD Snap, which was originally started at Red Hat, continued at, uh, at Google uh, to do snapshotting. Uh, was meant to be cluster snapshotting, but it worked perfectly well on a single node, so we used it. Put uh, X3 on top of it, uh, fixed the bugs, which took a couple of years, and ended up with a pretty amazing 
uh, Enterprise NAS system. We had uh, also NFS uh, version 3 and 4 on top of it um, with uh, Kerberized authentication and basically everything that that little company NetApp uh, had. Uh, that uh, kind of fell off the edge of the world for reasons that aren't completely clear to me, probably because I stopped working on it. Uh, it was brought to a, a state of, of, of proven reliability. Um, uh, it was a very simple snapshotting algorithm. Um, copy before write. You have data uh, on a disk. You have somebody writes to it. The uh, operating system picks up that write, intercepts it, copies out the data uh, to a snapshot store and let's uh, uh, the right proceed. So um, this has a di disadvantage that everything has to wait while we copy the data out. So there are other ways to do it called cow uh, copy on write snapshots, which you've heard about, uh, uh, ButterFS and uh, uh, ZFS, NetApp's Waffle. Uh, use what I call a shared tree snapshot approach. So Tux3 started because uh, I discovered an, a new algorithm for representing snapshots that uh, can store all the snapshotting information at the leaves of your file system tree instead of sharing file system trees. So that allowed us to adopt um, an old school kind of file system design where you have an inode table, you have a bunch of files uh, des uh, descending as trees from that inode table. Very, very simple thing that we could now do became possible because of this new snapshot uh, technology. So uh, we be uh, began uh, working on that. I began uh, working on it, coding it all up in user space. That was my idea. We'll start coding Tux3 in user space. Um, this is pretty cool. Some guy from a um, uh, Nordic country came along and, uh, and turned it into a fused file system um, uh, for us, Taro, uh, Taro Rapona, and that was pretty cool. He did that in about a day. So we had now two ways of running a Tux3 uh, file system. Um, at some point, uh, I attracted a developer named uh, Harafumi Ogawa, Ogawa to the project, and uh, he took on the kernel side of things. It's, uh, normally, I was expecting to do that myself. Well, frankly, uh, Harafumi is better at it than I am, <laughs> He's, uh, and, and he just got to work, and so we were able to divide the, those responsibilities, make, uh, make progress. Um, so, and about the time we're doing that, um, uh, ButterFS became a big thing. It was a, a big community thing. Even the X4 maintainer, uh, Ted, was lining up and saying, yes, uh, uh, X3, X4 has reached the end of its life. Uh, ButterFS is the next thing, and, and, and so on. Um, so that was good, and I went off and did other things um, for, uh, during that time. Um, after about three years of doing other things, Harifumi came back to me one day and said, Look, I, I think there's something good here in Tux3. There's a lot of good stuff. And he wanted to continue it, so, so we did agree to, uh, to continue it, got, get back to work on it. Um, Round about uh, Christmas last year, uh, we put together all the pieces up to that point. Uh, we, we were missing something called the atomic commit, which is your actual reliability. You, you have no idea what you've got until you actually run it and see that it is reliable. You don't know how fast it is or anything. Uh, so a little more than four years into the project, put it all together, ran it and uh, discovered that we were something like six times slower than X4 doing the same thing. However, then we noticed that our debug code was still on, that we were using 512-byte 
uh, block size and a bunch of other things weren't configured uh, correctly. So we fixed all those and ran the test again, and lo and behold, we actually beat uh, X4 on the first benchmark, which was, uh, I think, we were actually using a run of F FS stress uh, at that time uh, as a kind of a benchmark. So that, was, uh, that really gave us a lot of encouragement. Um, so we got down to the hard work of, of taking this, this working prototype and actually making it a file system. So I'm going to talk a bit about what it is and, and, and try and put in your minds the, an impression of the size and shape of this thing and, and how it works. Um, first thing is we really tried to use as many tried, uh, tried and true proven techniques as, as we possibly could. Um, one of those, uh, we, uh, Text3 has an inode table. Uh, a lot of new file systems don't have inode tables. They are built more like databases and, and some a unified concept. Well, Linux is actually really organized to have an inode, separate inode table and separate caches uh, for files. That's, that's the sweet spot of, uh, of Linux design. We de decided to stick with it. Um, Uh, so, but, but we didn't do, okay, we, we also use bitmaps, which is kind of like, a, um, considered a little bit archaic, um, and we put our, our, uh, we put our file names into directory files, so again, uh, old school. So, uh, we did some modernization, of course, just like everybody does. Uh, every file system has, has, has uh, adopted extends B-trees. Uh, most are using write anywhere now, moving away from journal model. Um, and we came up with some genuine new in innovations, which is, of course, why I'm, why I'm here. If there's, without that, there, there would be no reason for Tux3. Um, now let's look at those in a little more detail. Traditional elements, this is Benjamin Franklin. Big fighting? Well, he would have if he could have got his power stable. <laughs> um, okay, so Tux3 still has blocks. Um, cool. It uh, means you can you you can always allocate a block, um, and, uh, and 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 the structures that are required to take uh, to point at blocks are smaller than um, than memory pointers that can point anywhere. Uh, we have bitmaps. Um, there is a uh, you go and look at Jen, uh, Jeff Bonwick's blog about ZFS. He will tell you why bitmaps are no good, and we looked at that very critically and discovered holes in his arguments. It turns out that uh, that bitmaps are still a really good way to keep track of storage. Just to a uh, short illustration, uh, one bit maps one block, that means one 37,000th of your file system will be devoted to bitmaps. That should be OK. <laughs> um, I know a table, this was a lot harder decision. Um, it's very tempting to, uh, to say, well, why should you do two lookups? Why should you do a directory lookup and, and, and then another lookup in an inode table? Um, but uh, we, we stuck with it, and in practice, it doesn't seem to slow us down much. We've got a lot of very efficient caching code around that. There are actually uh, situations where it can be faster than, uh, than an all-in-one uh, structure if you're doing a pure uh, LS or something, just looking at the file uh, names, it's faster to have your file names in a file 
then mixed up with your actual file attributes. Um, index tree is exactly exactly one pointer to each extent. That's a, that's a big thing. That's what uh, the version pointers uh, technology allowed. Is it allowed us to adopt a design where each pointer in the file system tree of trees points uniquely at an extent. Each, each extent has one pointer coming uh, to it. That simplifies uh, checking it, simplifies updating it. Uh, lots of benefits. Just generally simplifies things. And uh, directories are in files. Um, OK, so modernizing uh, uh, some things, the same things that everybody else modernizes. Uh, we have uh, extents. We a little more compact than, than some other file systems extends. Uh, we were working on a format that averaged about 12 bytes per extent, and we finally uh, relaxed and went with a simpler format that was uh, easier to debug, 16 bytes uh, per extent. And an extent can map, what, a gigabyte or, or however much you want. So it can really help reduce metadata size. Uh, we use B-trees. Um, in a couple of places, uh, the uh, files are indexed with B-trees, and the inode table is not just a flat table in memory the way it is in the X series, but a tree with pointers and running B-tree algorithms. We discovered some things about B-trees when we really got into it that were kind of surprising. It's not common knowledge. B-trees are really actually not a very good structure for, uh, for updating. Um, and I'll, I'll get into that if we get uh, some time to talk about the shard map index. Uh, we made everything about inodes variable. Uh, inodes are variable size. They have a variable number of attributes. Uh, every attribute is optional. Attributes can have different sizes. And um, we actually made that work efficiently. It sounds like it should be costly, but apparently it's not, because as I say, we're performing pretty well. Um, and uh, metadata position unrestricted, write anywhere. I try to avoid that, sounds too much like write anywhere file system layout or waffle. Um, So stuff that is new in Tux3 and that makes this project worth doing. I mean, it, it might have been worth just writing a cleanup file system, but that would be a marginal uh, decision considered, considering the amount of effort involved. So we came up with uh, this method of doing atomic commit called uh, delta updates. Um, which we think is better than journaling. So why would you ever journal uh, now that this is invented? Um, uh, I'll, I'll get into more what it is uh, later. Um, th this allowed us to really raise the bar on consistency. Uh, we are doing the equivalent of what would be in X3 journal uh, equals data, that is, we're recording all data to disk in the order it's written in a very precise way. Um, we do that quickly and accurately. Um, and we're able to do that at a very high speed. Uh, so we get this seemingly impossible best of two worlds, uh, best of both worlds. Um, strongest possible data consistency and highest uh, performance. So how do we do that? Uh, one of the ways we did it is with uh, asynchronous front-end, back-end um, concept uh, that I first heard of, Matt Dillon's Hammer file system. Um, the, uh, the, the front end is basically your syscalls, file system syscalls to read and write and so on 
that all happens in cache. Uh, and the back end is the thing that updates the file system. That runs completely asynchronously in, uh, in Tech 3. So that means that the front end is never waiting for the, the back end to get something written to disk. It just continues. I mean, there are a few ca cases where it does have to wait, but for the most part, it doesn't. This uh, log unify, we uh, made a creative use of logging. So um, is not like a logging file system. Uh, it's a kind of a write anywhere log. Instead of writing out a whole metadata block like a bitmap or, or index pointers or, or whatever, we'll just append a message to the log that says yeah, the, uh, that uh, uh, block should be um, edited in, in this way. Um, and uh, we'll do our delta commits, uh, which are uh, a chunk, uh, a whole bunch of blocks that have to be written together so that you get a, a move from one consistent file system state to the next consistent file system state. Um, we will include our log blocks, some log blocks in each one of those deltas. And we'll do several of those deltas before we actually go and change the, the tree, the file system tree that exists on media. Uh, and that we call a, a unify. So that is, uh, that's log unify. That's another one of our advantages that's, that's good for quite a bit of performance. Uh, one really neat thing it does, um, just uh, I think I have roughly one minute to describe how uh, how uh, Waffle and BitterFS work. If, uh, you have a file system tree. Uh, you want to change something in it. Uh, you want to leave that entire tree alone and have a new tree that points at your, all the old stuff plus the new piece of data that you wrote. Um, in order to make that happen, you have to find the thing that pointed at that new piece of data give it a new location. You have to find the thing that pointed to it, give it a new location, uh, all the way to root. So that is recursive uh, copy to root. And I think I actually took two minutes to explain it. So I'll try to do it better next time. Um, we, with our log unify, we, we eliminate that. Uh, in, uh, when we uh, want to we, we are, just like those other file systems, a non-destructive update. We never overwrite anything. We find a new place for it. Um, and we'll make the metadata point at it. But we will not update the parent that points at that metadata. Instead, we will log uh, a log entry that says, change the parent sometime. And we will eventually um, update the parent in a unify and we won't update all the parents either in the, in the unify. Uh, we just go up one level. So, so our, our changes ripple slowly up the tree, eventually get to the root. We'll event, eventually get a new root for the entire file system. Just a, a neat, efficient way to do it. Uh, a couple of other things. Uh, I uh, did the H tree index uh, for X3. Um, which uh, has been pretty much un unbeatable over the last 10 years in terms of performance. It's given uh, X3.4 a good leg up on the competition. But it doesn't scale that well as in when you go over a few million files in one directory, you start having issues. So I wanted to go back uh, when, when, uh, while developing Tux3, see if I could do something about that. And uh, quite amazingly, we did come up with an entirely new um, kind of indexing technology that is very capable of handling a billion files per directory and, and meets or beats H tree in pretty much every way, except for a couple of you know, easily quantifiable cases that, uh, that are not that important. It, uh, it generally, I hope, obsoletes H tree. We might even see it going back into uh, to X4 if it uh, performs to expectations. And the uh, version pointers, which I talked about briefly.
Well, I'm going to skip past this one. I already said something about it, and uh, we have a few slides to get through. Um, block bitmaps. So I'll just uh, mention uh, Jeff Bonwick's blog entry on this, which you'll find if you ever go searching for why uh, free space should be mapped with extents. Um, so as the proof, uh, uh, he points out that if you have a heavily fragmented file and you've mapped it with bitmaps and you're going to delete that file, now you have to update zillions of bitmaps. Uh, but then if you look at it critically, you'll notice that you have much bigger problems than just your bitmaps if your massive file is that fragmented. So yeah, we looked at that uh, in some detail and decided that uh, bitmaps are still, still the best way to do things. Um, one bit versus 16 uh, bytes that is uh, a factor of 128 size advantage for, for a bit to map a block. When your file system gets full is when you really care about all these bitmap blocks, you've got lots and lots of single blocks being mapped by bits. So ultimately, the bitmap blocks win, especially the way we do our log unify, where we don't actually write out a whole bitmap every time we change it. We just append a log entry and later sometime down the road we'll go and write out the actual bitmap block. Uh, allocation. So um, this is where we are right now in Tux3 is doing the allocation. We have basically done taken care of just about everything else that needs taken care of uh, uh, so that you can use Tux3 as a local file system. Um, allocation is interesting challenge. Uh, for the most part, we can follow X3's model, the Orlov allocator you've probably heard of. Um, but there are some special challenges because we're uh, non-destructive uh, copy on write. We have to keep moving stuff around. So, so all those heuristics have to be adapted for our special situation. Uh, that's in progress right now. Um, until this is actually completed, we're not going to be doing certain benchmarks because our, uh, our placeholder allocation strategy is just allocate next, next block is, uh, was proven long ago by Microsoft to be a very bad strategy <laughs> that brought us uh, the defrag. Um, so we'll continue. Um, uh, skip, skip ahead. There's a lot to say about allocation, but uh, I don't think we quite have time. We've been through log and unify uh, pretty well. There's uh, one observation. You've, uh, our, our logging uh, is a little bit different from the traditional uh, log FS kind would. Uh, uh, kind of logging, which was great for writing, because you're always just writing in the next available location. Uh, really bad for reading, because your reads are horribly fragmented. So we err on the side of no uh, read fragmentation. We'll slow down our writing a bit um, to get better, uh, reduce read fragmentation. Turns out we don't have to slow it down very much. Our atomic commit is really a key element of, uh, of, of Tux3. We found a way to do it that uh, allows us to give full data safety at speeds faster than what a metadata-only journal can manage. And this is all about uh, trying to achieve that state of instant off, you know, where you can just hit the power any time. And that, that's really what I've been after since the very beginning in Tux2. It was about instant off and so on. So we're actually getting 
a little bit closer, a little bit closer to that. This is our um, asynchronous front and back uh, separation. It's a uh, very cool technique which is made possible by um, this neat underlying technology, which I'm not really going to get into, uh, called block forking, where we when somebody tries to write a block in cache that is already on its way to disk, we take that block out of cache and and put another block of uh, put another copy of it in its place. Um, so, needless to say, that involved a lot of really arcane things that we did in the kernel to to make that work. Uh, it does work now pretty well, and it's the uh, very, very cool in the way it actually lets us take a snapshot of cache effectively, considerably simplifies the process of getting a consistent update out to disk. Also keeps the front end from stalling. So yeah, and after all, it is about performance. That's the First thing you look for, you just assume that it's going to be your file system on Linux is going to be reliable, um, and you judge it on performance. So I know what attributes already mentioned, variable everything, wrote that code fairly efficiently, doesn't slow us down, does not show up in um, CPU profiles. Scaling is a huge challenge. Um, so this is where Tux3 is bringing a little something extra to the uh, table. You, uh, you, you can actually make a, a, a full file system that you can mount uh, in 16K of volume memory uh, if you use 512-byte blo blocks. <laughs> so if, it, uh, if you use 4K blocks, it's more like 64K, something like that. So it really scales down to the smallest imaginable uh, devices. It's got a very simple internal structure. It doesn't need very many elements to record its, its uh, uh, base data and metadata. So it goes up to an exabyte now. What is an exabyte? Uh, I uh, did some back of the envelope uh, calculations and uh, decided that an exabyte of disks today would be somewhere uh, in size between a volleyball court and a basketball court worth of uh, disk racks. So it's not really something that we can test in the foreseeable future. Who knows? Maybe by the time that 2037. Uh, problem comes up, uh, we'll actually be able to test and see whether Tux3 can really um, create a usable exabyte file system. But in, in the meantime, we'll just concentrate on making sure that every structure that we use and adopt uh, does scale, the B trees scale, and everything. Um, FSCK is almost the number one issue facing the file system community now. Um, if you ever do have to check your file system because you know it's got some corruption, it can take days. It's heading towards weeks. It's, this is broken, and, uh, and this is really something that we have to fix. So we've got a little bit of leg up on that with Tux3. We started working on our FSCK. It partially works now. Uh, we're looking at how to do it incrementally. That's still research. Um, and in practical terms, what scale do we need to handle? We, we need to work well on, on these little devices, embedded devices, DVD player. I've got a DVD player running Linux. Probably half the people in the room do now. Um, and people will run it on the big uh, Lawrence Livermore things too, where they run X4 back in for, uh, for Lustre. Uh, we have to cover that as a, as a Linux file system. We have to cover that in 
entire spectrum in, in practice. There's no wiggle room there. That's uh, some of the file systems that you could describe as competitors to Tux3, um, uh, ButterFS, um, XFS, don't really scale down that well, particularly um, ButterFS. It's one of, the, one of the reasons we got back to work on Tux3. Okay, so uh, I've got a couple of minutes here. I'm actually going to eat into my own question period a bit. Yeah, I've got uh, 11 minutes to be precise. <laughs> yeah. um, so let's uh, look at, a, 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 at something resembling a benchmark here. It's just a linear write of one four gig uh, file onto the file system. So. Um, Tuxery writes it at 50.9 megabits a second. Uh, read from cold cache uh, a little faster, 60 megabytes a second. And the actual raw speed of this device is 61 megabytes a second. So uh, Tuxery is doing the write in, at, at about 96% of, of maximum attainable performance and the read back is at 98%. Um, and uh, this, is, this is what it's doing. This is a graph of, uh, of write position uh, versus time. There's the position on the volume. Here's time. And here's our four gigabyte uh, file being written. Uh, you'll have a little dot for every, every place that it has to seek somewhere else and write some data. Uh, here you see the uh, deltas, one delta, next delta, next delta. Uh, these uh, little gaps here could be a performance issue. We uh, uh, write queue drains and everything while, uh, while we're doing our atomic commit in there. So we try and make, uh, do that as quickly as we can. Um, we have, uh, we're putting down our metadata as we write, and uh, every now and then we'll do a unify. In this case, we're doing a unify every th three deltas, just to exercise the unify. Um, and the name of the game here is, uh, is to just write as much as you possibly can by n and, and knowing that you're not writing anything extra, you want to see that that write uh, bandwidth is as high as possible. Another way of putting it is we need to keep the write queue full. So we read that back, and uh, we, you see the extra seeking other than just the linear reads here. We read a couple of blocks here that got dropped up there by the last delta, and uh, a couple more here. This is actually a bug. Uh, we evicted those guys from cache. When we looked at this chart, we realized that we were doing that. We went and fixed that. So um, in this, we only did four, four out-of-line seeks for the whole read. And, um, and now it's down to two. So that uh, is really about as fast as it can be. Again, keep that uh, throughput up as high as possible. Uh, so that, that was a, a very simple performance situation. Obviously, things get a lot more complex than that. I'm not going to do a lot more. Uh, I'm not going to do any more benchmarks today. I will allude to some that we have uh, posted. Um, uh, we, uh, a few months back, posted one faster than tempfs. It uh, had some rather excited uh, commentary, but, uh, but we actually beat this very high performance uh, temp of S, which is really not a lot more than just Linux's uh, caching layer. Um, Tux3 was able to beat it while being backed by disk store. And it was able to beat temp of S because our deletes, our truncates, run in the background in another process and, 
and they don't on TempFS. So there's going to be uh, more of that as we go. Uh, there's really, we, we, we don't see serious issues with hitting, you know, best of class in every benchmark at this, at this point. Just work. Uh, okay, shard map. Um, I already spoke about shard map, and I'm already into my question time, uh, so I'm just going to uh, mention that th this was an example of a real fit of in inspiration. Uh, this uh, is an, uh, a problem I've been working on. I'd been working on for 10 years trying to find a way to fix H tree, and uh, the answer came to me in. Just one second, you know, in the, while having a shower and banging away at the problem, I just realized what I had to do. Uh, so shard map is in memory, hash table. On disk, it's a bunch of little FIFOs. And this solves our update problem. Um, also gives us very good cache performance. It, uh, shard map really needs a presentation all on its own. Uh, and the same with version pointers. It's a very cool technology, something like, um, something like the weave structure that was the traditional form for uh, uh, CVV, uh, CVV, CVVS, VCCS, actually, for both of those. Um, so uh, we came up with something like that. Uh, a binary form of that that works really well for uh, for file systems, we think. Progress. So we've been working on Tux3 since 2009. Um, three years out, it's actually only a couple of years of uh, real developer work uh, times two developers in a bit, so we've got about five man years in that. There will probably be more than 100 man years in it before it's finished. Now, obviously, we're not going to do that. We're going to propose for merge and in a, in a fa fairly usable state, and then people will come in and start contributing their talents. Um, I, I went through a bit of that. We actually got this working uh, last Christmas, uh, tested it, and wow, I mean, to made the, all the work before it worthwhile. Uh, now, at this moment, we are preparing to offer it for merge. We're solving the last uh, three big problems. Um, and we have declared that you have to actually be able to use it on root, which you can. Hirofumi is running stress tests on Type 3 as root file system right now in Japan. Um, and of course, it will be used at your own risk for quite some time. And there are the three big items. Um, uh, memory map consistency. This was uh, some fallout from um, from the forking, uh, cool technology. We had a really deep issue that we had to go and solve. So that was done about two weeks ago. We came up with a solution. So um, merge should not be that far away. We'll offer it for merge. People get to kick at it, and uh, we'll and we'll see what happens. Uh, so uh, I'll introduce you to the Tech 3 core team. That would be me and Hirofumi Ogawa. There are other uh, contributors, but we're the main ones. And I will thank you for listening and open up for questions. Good question. So the question is, uh, is Tex3 intended to be a traditional hard drive uh, system? In other words, what about Flash? Um, so yeah. Um, so we're, we're 
always cognizant of, of both. And what we discovered is that if you optimize for a hard disk, you are pretty much optimized as well as you can be for flash, assuming a flash translation layer. Yeah. OK, so uh, no, uh, no more questions. I thank you very much uh, for attending. I'll see you later.